Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. I was on the phone with patients a little bit late, so we got a live Q&A here. Apologize for the delay, but let's dig in. I got a lot of patient questions here. What is going on? Let me know what is happening. Excited to be here with y'all, connected. Let's see here, what is happening? All right, off the bat, a couple of questions. Elizabeth writes in, hey Elizabeth, Dr. J, what are some good signs? What are some signs of SIBO? Do you ever test for this? So yeah, when we see dysbiosis on a GI map test, that's a good sign there, there could be small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. SIBO is typically more location driven. So you need like a breath test. So I find if I see issues on the GI map, that's enough for me. If I have more complicated gut patients, we'll run a, a GI map plus a SIBO breath test. So a lot of times we can just figure out a general dysbiosis from the GI map. It's not gonna be location specific, but with the gases and the timing of the gases, you can see if the bacterial overgrowth is, is specifically in the small intestine. Most time, a breath test is not needed, though. Uh, last night, I ate, oh, so signs of it. Yeah, so bloating, gas, diarrhea, um, digestive issues, you know, your whole run-of-the-mill kind of things. But they can be other things, too. So there's a lot of overlap between SIBO and, and generalized dysbiosis and parasites and fungus and yeast. So there's a lot of overlap between the two. Uh, last night, I ate grain-free bar with close to 20 grams of fat, Brazil nuts before bed and woke up with extreme brain fog, yellowish eyes, and sluggish digestion, followed by loose stools. Yeah, it sounds like you really had a hard time with the, the fat digestion. What was different, though? Was it too much fat? Was it the nuts that you're not used to? What was different there? Um, if there could have been a major shift in your macronutrients. Was your stool kind of sludgy, and did it kind of float a bit? Could have been a fat issue. Could have been an issue with the nuts. Yep, so listen to your body. Cut back a little bit on the fat. Up the bile salts and see if that makes a difference and then also look at the nuts, see if that was an issue. Jeff wrote in, hey, Jeff, I know you've had some issues. Glad you're connected, man. I went to the ER. I have the flu again. They put me on Tamiflu, and they kept trying to pump me full of proton pump inhibitors. I denied them, so I'm on carrots and meat and ginger tea. Any help? Yeah, so Tamiflu is only going to decrease the symptoms of the flu by 17 hours. The side effects are psychosis, so you got to be careful with that. Um, the best thing, ginger is going to be awesome, and then you could always do like a chaga mushroom or a reishi mushroom is going to be phenomenal. So if we're kind of doing that, reishi mushroom, maybe throw in some vitamin C high dose. Those would be like, if we're going to do like one or two things, that'd be it. I have a couple more things that you can do. It's in my article, what to do when you get sick part two. It's in the members area for patients. Take a look at that. Um, and then if you're feeling more stable, you can go to that phase one on the SCD phasing chart where you start to add in some zucchini. You start to add in some, um, some squashes, acorn squash, butternut squash, keep it peeled, keep it cooked. But again, if you're having a whole bunch of flu stuff, you may even want to try fasting a little bit and just sipping on bone broth for a day just to keep it really easy on your gut. But keep me posted and keep chiming in on these live hangouts. Uh, when can I start doing the GI clearing? My immune system is keeps on catching everything going around. Get through the cold first. Get your digestive, digestive system stable, and then we'll start adding that in, Jeff. Hope that makes sense. Uh, J.M. Macman writes in, after Jay, what are your thoughts on vitiligo? I've had it for five years. I'm now thinking it could be related to food. What are your thoughts? I've been a, a longtime fan. Keep the great work. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. So yeah, autoimmunity vitiligo is what Michael Jackson had. That's why he started wearing the glove on his left hand in, in the mid 80s. He was covering up the first sign of vitiligo. All right. And number two, autoimmune. So go full autoimmune. That's really important. There's various catalase creams that can help with pigmentation or repigmentation. Um, but the first thing is get the underlying cause of it actually, you know, supported and addressed. Then look deeper at the gut. There could be some gut infections. Work through the six R's to get the gut dialed in. Hope that helps, Jam. Didi writes in, I'm on the Wiley protocol for premature ovarian failure. I'm gaining so much weight despite uh, clean eating. So, yes, yeah, so the Wiley protocol, if it's premature ovarian, ovarian failure, I imagine you're what, in your 20s or 30s? So she's going to typically cycle progesterone and cycle estrogen, right? That's kind of it. Estrogen the first half of the month, progesterone the last half of the month. I think that's fine. I would look at the adrenals and I would really make sure you have the diet 100% dialed in as well as the gut too. If you have anything more specific, uh, let me know. But there could be you know, insulin issues. Your diet may not be great. Adam, I said, Dr. J, I have an obvious yeast overgrowth, but I can't seem to beat it. I've tried all the antifungals, including your GI Clear 5 and 6. And my diet's been perfect. Also, no molds or heavy metals. What's left? So what makes you think you have a yeast overgrowth? Do we have clinical signs like tinea on your skin or a white um, coated tongue or, you know, chronic fungal fungals on your toes? What's the sign? 
What's making you think you have it? Also, have you done a gut test to see if you have maybe a deeper infection where yeast is kind of peripheral, where you maybe have H. pylori in yeast or a parasite in yeast? What else have you figured out? I'd be curious to look deeper. I wouldn't be just throwing clearing herbs at it just willy-nilly. I want to know that that's the only thing that's there. But yeah, the seven, the SF 722 by Thorn is great. That's the undecanoic acid. My silver, the GI Clear 3 is great. But get a little bit more data on what you're shooting. You haven't even given me any clinical signs or symptoms why you even think it's yeast. So I'm just curious to know why. Lisa wrote in, I just had oral surgery and was given a course of antibiotics to take for seven days. I'm taking GI Clear 1, 4, and 5. Do I stay clear off the antibiotics? So I think you'd probably be okay, right? Um, just keep an eye on everything. If you're doing, personally, I'd probably have the GI Clear 3 in there because it's liquid and I would gargle with the 3 because the 3 has antibacterial qualities, okay? So I got to be careful. Med legal, when you have tooth infections, right, that can go to the, that can affect the heart or the brain. So we got to be really careful with tooth infections, but you'd notice it, you'd see it. I think if you're doing the GI Clear 3 and you're flushing it in your mouth and you're doing the 4 or the 5, I think you're totally set and you wouldn't have an issue. Just keep an eye on it. That's all I'd say. Didi wrote in, binders, I don't tolerate any charcoal. Will pectisol be a good binder for a parasite protocol? Yeah, I think it would be actually really good. Take it away from food. Adam writes in, the turpentine castor oil protocol seems to be extremely effective for people. It's very controversial, but it's also all natural. Have you ever considered incorporating it in your protocol? Yeah, I mean, Castor oil is going to help a lot on the laxative side. I've just, I've chose to go a different way with magnesium and ginger and other things just because it can be a little bit irritating. I've heard interesting things about the turpentine, but um, yeah, I'm just not willing to, to jump on board that train. Keep me posted how you're liking it though. If it's effective, that's good. I have, you know, good effectiveness with the herbs I've used. I just, I'm not willing to go there yet. Thanks for sharing though. Paul wrote in, what's the hardest parasite in your experience to remove? I would say entamoeba histolytica is a tough one. It's nasty. Entamoeba is an amoeba that histo meaning cell and then lytic means cut. So it's an amoeba that, that cuts its way through your cells and it actually kills a significant amount of people in third world countries. It causes diarrhea, um, you essentially dysentery, and then you um, lose electrolytes and then you can have hardy, uh, cardiac issues for sure. Uh, Didi says, is liposomal biocidin good for parasites and SIBO? Yes, it is. I do like that product. I think it's really good. Uh, Sarah writes in, are there any side effects of taking digestive enzymes? Uh, not typically. I mean, if you're sensitive, anything could be a side effect, right? But in general, no, I think they're overall pretty darn safe. A family member thinks she has a yeast or fungal infection on her forehead and her cheeks. She gets random rashes on her face in these, pla in these places and says that her face is so itchy all the time on her cheeks. Hard to say. Um, I mean, you can go look online, tinea versicolor. It could easily be an eczema or a psoriasis thing too. So it's hard to say. I would put her on a lower carb, antifungal, anti, uh, essentially a a AIP, autoimmune kind of template, see what happens. But if it's something on her face, I would give a try. You could do either Wonder Bomb by Perea, or you could do the Mother of All Creams by them. If you think it's more fungus, I would do the Wonder Bomb and just see how she does with that. That's very helpful for skin fungus, but it could easily be eczema or it could easily be psoriasis too. So make sure you make the diet, the diet changes as well. What can you do naturally to get rid of it? Yep, do those um, creams I mentioned. Hey, Matt, hope you're doing good. Um, so some results with the keto burning, the small amount of body fat, but keto is very challenging for me. Fatigue, depression, workout weakness. Uh, I think I have enough calories, but I don't know. Yeah, man, I saw your pictures you sent in, man. You're looking good. I mean, it's just a tiny bit of extra fat there. I wouldn't freak out about it. I wouldn't worry. You may want to play with around with a little bit of uh, intermittent fasting. You may want to play around with a little bit of just higher intensity interval training Tabata stuff. And if you're having a problem with the keto, just do a cyclical keto. If you can do a couple days in a row, then do a high carb night every three or four days. Play around with that. See if that works. If not, just adjust the carbs to the highest or to the lowest amount where you feel the best. You know, play around with that. Don't um, don't kill yourself, but do what works. Listen to your body. It's really important. We kind of start with a generalized foundation where most people are very dogmatic. They're like, that's where you have to be. My approach is start with the foundation and then let's move into what is starting to feel right within reason. Dennis writes in, why does schizophrenia cause and hodynia, the inability to enjoy everyday pleasures. Oh, that's a great question. I didn't even know that word. And hodynia. Okay, I'm adding that to my vocabulary. Awesome. 
Um, so in general, more than likely schizophrenia, I mean, there's a lot of inflammation in and around schizophrenia. There's a lot of association with gluten sensitivity in schizophrenia. Um, Dr. Emily Deans, a psychiatrist out of Harvard, has talked about this, has written about it. So there's a big gluten issue. And when there's gluten, there typically is leaky gut and then gut inflammation and brain inflammation. So anytime the brain's inflamed, lots of things may not function right. So I would work on the brain inflammation, but the underlying reason why, who knows? There's so many symptoms that can happen when there's gut and brain inflammation, tons. I had the patient who had significant ataxia, almost like MS type of ataxia where, you know, it moved with a tremor and we got the diet cleaned up and the tremor went away in a couple of months, like unbelievable stuff. So it's amazing what happens when you get inflammation out of the brain. So many things can get better. Uh, Lisa writes in, do you have any recommendations for a natural infection prevention for post-oral surgery? Yeah, you can do the silver, the GI Clear 3. I think that's wonderful. Um, you could even throw in some GI Clear 5 oil of oregano. You could even do some of the essential oil called Thieves or On Guard by doTERRA Young Living. Put a couple of drops in some water and you could swish that around as well in your mouth. Gargle for 30 seconds to a minute. I think that's great. You could also do some oil pulling. Um, put some coconut oil in your mouth, flush it around for 10 minutes, spit it out afterwards. Spit it out. With the antimicrobials, you could swallow it. Like the silver, you could twish it around and then swallow. With the On Guard or Thieves, you could twish it around and swallow. With the coconut oil, you would spit it out because that would be soaking up toxins and you would spit that out. Hope that helps. All right. Did I answer everything here, guys? What's going on? A couple more questions come in. Oh, wow, a lot more came in. All right, Katie writes in, 28 years old and progesterone is in the postmenopausal range. Is it possible to reverse it? Yes, you totally can. I've had dozens of patients reverse it. Make sure you're fixing your diet, your lifestyle. You want to get your adrenals checked out as well because the adrenals are going to be a significant backup generator for a lot of your progesterone. Get, your, get that dialed in. Make sure your gut's working. Make sure you're eating enough good fat and cholesterol too. Addie writes in, Hey, Dr. J, I took a detox pill and got boils all over my, my face, but not my body. Do you know why it only appeared on my face and not my body? That's a great question. I have no idea. That just may be kind of the area where your body is deciding to push things through. Why? Who knows, right? It's crazy. Uh, what did you take? What was in the detoxification pill? Uh, number two. Number three, I typically don't recommend detoxifying until we have the gut working well. I personally find out that a lot of people that they don't have good motility, they're not pooping out 12 inches of stool a day, that, that they could reabsorb a lot of the stuff they detoxify because we need good healthy hepatobiliary function to detoxify, number one. Make sure the gut's doing well. If we're doing like a B vitamin, kind of liver supporting herbal kind of formula, like dandelion or milk thistle, fine, but you need the sulfur aminos and you may need some binders in there too. So I'd make sure the gut's better. I'd probably come in there with some binders first and then gently nudge in some of these herbs and nutrients. In my line, we do liver supreme or antioxidant supreme and then detox aminos. And then if we're sensitive, we'll up slowly and we'll do it with the activated charcoal or some kind of a binder in the background, but you probably need to make sure the gut's better first. Hey, Irma, can dysbiosis or candida cause high SIG A? Yes, it can because your immune system can definitely be going after it and fighting it. So yes, Genova test only shows little candida and low gut diversity. Yes, so it could easily be caused by that. So that's a good, good thesis there. How do you write in? What kind of bio salts, uh, any specific brands? Um, so it's bio, B-I-L-E. Um, there's a couple of different brands that are out there. I mean, all the major good supplement lines have some kind of a, a fat digestive product. In my line, one's called Liver Supreme, and it's got the um, it's got the beetroot, which helps thin out the bile. It's got the phosphatidylcholine. It's got the taurine. It's got the artichoke and the fringe tree, which help thin out the bile. And then it's got the ox bile. So different companies, like tier one companies, have different forms of that. Similar. Janet writes in: I get nauseous sometimes going up a lot of stairs. I'm 67, lifelong hypoglycemic. Eat low carb mostly and gluten free, lactose free, intolerant. Low blood pressure, low thyroid, is keto okay for you? I would be very careful going full keto. Number one, make sure you're getting enough good minerals, like a Redmond's Real Salt, and an additional potassium support, because I'm concerned that your blood pressure is getting too low and you can't perfuse blood well enough. Number two, test your blood sugar, fasting one hour, two hour, three hour, make sure you're not crashing. If you're really crashing and you're kind of already at a leaner body type, I would put in just enough safe carbohydrate so you don't crash. But I'd be working with you closely. I'd have you be monitoring your blood sugar, and we got to get the minerals up. 
Redmond's real salt. You can add a new salt or you can do a good quality potassium. Those have to get up for you. When you have adrenal issues like you do and blood sugar issues, which are adrenal as well, um, it's very easy to, to not be able to hold on to minerals because your mineral corticoids are so low. Entropy wrote in, headaches pylori and candida use a 14-day antibiotic treatment. How can I stop candida and bad bacteria to eat the dead ones and grow again and increase the good bacteria? So six R's. So you did probably a prev pack, which is clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and pralosec more than likely. A lot of times docs will give like a flat, not a flagell, a, um, a diflucan or a ketoconazole kind of antibi or antifungal after treatment sometimes to prevent it. But in my line, we would do like a probioflora and a sacroflora, like a high-dose bifido and lactobacillus and a high-dose saccharomyces. That'd be great. We could also throw in some butyrate uh, on the side as well to help. Paul wrote in, just eradicate H. pylori, um, but dating multiple girls. If I kiss one, how many G I clear two pills should I take to ensure that they won't give it to me? I would probably do at least two at a time. I think that's fine. Uh, that's great. You could always get a really good thieves or essential oil mouthwash or just you know flush your mouth with hydrogen peroxide or uh, silver as well. That's a good um, that's a good option. If I was in the field again dating, uh, I would be doing something like that for sure. Too many people got some nasty stuff going on. Adam wrote, I do a tinea versicolor subderm white coating. My GI map came back with three small parasites below limit, but I treated it and felt no difference. Yeah, so I would say, I don't know what you did for the protocol, but in my line, you would do like a GI clear one, four, five, 60 days. We would do probiotics on the back end, and I'd have you on a, a lower carbohydrate kind of paleo autoimmune template to start. Uh, Roshan wrote in, how many minutes before a meal should we take digestive enzymes? Some say enzymes before and then HCL in the middle. Here's the deal, right? I deal with patients and I need to get results. And if I'm too like perfectionist or too utopian, patients fall off the wagon. So I just do enzymes and HCL in the middle of the meal. Why? Because some people, their gut linings are so freaking inflamed, they just can't handle anything leaning up against it. So I do it in the middle of the meal. That's why it's kind of sandwiched in between food. So I've done it that way for years just because my recommendations are designed to produce the least amount of side effects, essentially. Um, so Adam writes in, so the yeast overgrowth seems to be obvious, but I still can't beat it. Yeah, got to dig in deeper, man. Dig in deeper and retest. Okay, good. A lot of questions. Hold on, guys. Lost my place. Um, ba, 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 ba. How can I lower SHGB? Um, you can do that with 10 milligrams a day of boron and stinging nettle, but just, you know, got to look at the whole hormone picture. Is vegan whole food based diet okay if you have hypoglycemia? Well, I'd be looking at your macros. I'd be concerned that you're not getting enough protein and good quality fat. That'd be the first thing I'd be looking at. And I'd be thinking maybe you're doing too much carbs and you're having a reactive hypoglycemia spike. That's my first thing. Wow. Just watching your video. Awesome. What diet would you recommend for SIBO? Low FOD. Yeah, low FODMAP, paleo low FODMAP I think is great. Really good feedback. It does starve out some of the critters. Any ideas on calcium deficiencies causing slight muscle twitching? Ah, don't go to calcium. Go to magnesium and potassium first. Roshan Mardin, just sharing my experience. I initially thought I just have enzymes or bile supplements don't work for me, but much later I realized that I needed to nearly double intake of HCL. I 100% HCL is the first domino we have to make sure we dial in i 100 percent agree with that tanya wrote in is it safe to open my capsules for my vitamins and take them with water yes totally is adness wrote in my 16 year old son had been somewhat congested for almost two months with a mild uh, occasional cough so what could it be so i would have him on some ginger i'd have him on some ginger um for sure and i would also rinse out the sinuses because there could easily be just a, a post nasal drip where you get some bacteria hanging way back in the sinuses and it's dripping down and it's just uh, irritating the villi. Get on the x -Lear sinus rinse protocol where you squeeze up the nose for a good like five seconds, let it drip down one side, then the other side. Do the x -Lear solution. Happened to me this year, it's a post-nasal drip. That should help. Make sure the diet's good though. J. Pat writes in, will stomach stop producing much HCL if I take it regularly? Will the body become dependent on it? No. Great question, Jessica. So in general, um, they look at gastrin. Gastrin is like a, a, a basically a, a compound that's produced and gastrin feeds back to make stomach acid and gastrin levels do not drop when you take HCL. It's actually a positive feedback loop. It's not going to disrupt it. It's not like 
for instance, a guy's gonads taking testosterone, it won't like decrease the function of it. So don't worry about that. More importantly, as your digestion gets better, my goal is to always get patients off it and then just see how they do, right? So get them to only use it when they're eating bigger meals and eating when they're stressed. And then just try like when the environment's great and you're like stress-free and you can chew and relax, that's where we try not to use those. But don't worry about it now. Think about it as a good crutch so you can digest your food better. Elizabeth writes in, how effective do you think a low FODMAP diet is? It's very effective, but I mean, it's a tool. It's not meant to be something that you live on forever. It has a great effect on starving some of these critters out, but then we want to add foods back in, especially during killing because FODMAPs act like cheese on a mousetrap. Um, Pimentel studies over at Cedar sinai found that adding guar gum actually it helped improve the effectiveness of antibiotics for um, SIBO. So we kind of do that with just higher FODMAP foods, like moderate and or higher ones, but just do it within tolerance so you're not feeling overly bloated. Paul writes in, is zonulin a true marker of leaky gut for the GI MAP test? Yeah, it is. I mean, Alessio Fasano has kind of made this marker more famous because it's a um, protein that increases with leaky gut. So as far as I know, it is a good marker. I also would want to look at other things that could be driving zonulin, like inflammation and, and gluten antibodies and other infections too. Elizabeth writes in, uh, also, what are your thoughts on lectins? I mean, yeah, so a paleo diet is automatically going to be lower in lectins. Um, automatically. And then when we go to an autoimmune diet, it's even lower because we're cutting out nuts and seeds and nightshades, right? Those are very high in lectins. And then obviously cooking the food more also decreases the lectins cooking slash soaking. So yeah, we definitely like, it's already built into a lot of my recommendations. I know Dr. Gundry's kind of made it famous, but if you're on a paleo template and or you're cooking your foods or an autoimmune diet, that's typically enough. I mean, there are kind of some obscure foods like squashes, etc. But peel the skin, cook it, steam it, saute it, be more on the paleo, or if you're more sensitive, AIP side, and you'll be fine. Paula Hearn writes in, is stuff, if stuff isn't moving to the gut, but I'm parasite free, what could be the cause? Well, it sounds like maybe a little bit of gastroparesis. So I'd make sure there's enough good bacteria, beneficial bacteria is there. I'd make sure hydrochloric acid and enzymes are there too. That'd be the first two, two things I would look at. Make sure you're infection free. I'd also want to know, like, what does your stool look like? Are you chewing your food up enough? Those kind of like diet and lifestyle things too. Sarah wrote in is if her fung if her rash is fungal, is it, is it is it okay to use colloidal silver? Do you mean topically? Um, you could do it orally, but I wouldn't do it topically per se. I would do the Wonder Bomb cream and do that topically. Rashawn wrote in is a little amount of white coating on the tongue considered normal, or should we aim for no white coating? I mean, it just depends, but I would say in general, no white coating. Let's see here. Addy wrote in, it has zinc 15 milligrams, selenium 200 micrograms, copper 0.5, chlorella, spirulina, algae, MSM, dandelion, Oregon grape, milk thistle, matcha, red clover, alpha lipoic. Yeah, okay. So I would do something that's a little bit more segregated. So I would do something like just like an herbal tonic, like, like milk thistle, dandelion, ginger, like something very simple. And then just do something simple over here where there's just amino acids. And I would integrate them one at a time and I'd add in some binders and I would get, make sure your gut's working better first. Because there's a lot of things in there that they can be binding metals too. So you got to be careful. Elizabeth writes in, what's the highest dose of liver supreme bile salts can I take to help with fat? I mean, just listen to your body. I think you can go up to three, maybe four. But if you're having to go that high, I'd probably just drop down the fat just a little bit. The only thing I would say is if you feel like you're not getting enough and you need this on top of that to get enough, then I would listen to your body with that. But probably between three, maybe four max. Usually most people need one or two. So just see kind of where you're at. Like maybe you just do like four meals that are a little bit smaller versus three bigger, right? So listen to your body and we'll adjust those macros to what feels best. Janet writes in, what do you mean by keto paleo profile? So keto paleo is basically lower carbohydrate, typically less than 30 net carbs. And then paleo is typically putting a qualifier on the macronutrients. So keto paleo means organic grass fed meat. It means, you know, uh, hormone free, organic vegetables. It also means we're not going to have soy protein. It also means we're not going to have a whole bunch of casein protein. It may also mean that we're not going to have a whole bunch of cheese 
or milk, right? Because those things may be lower carb, but they may not be keto, right? So that's kind of where we highlight that keto paleo template. Michael writes in, GI map shows strep in the gut. How do I get rid of it? So in my line, we would use various herbs from the GI clear protocol. George wrote in, hey, George, are all well-known brand of probiotics acid resistance or should it get, go to, should it get to the small intestine? Well, it depends. Some have certain encapsulations that help it be more acid resistant. Um, some people say taking some probiotics that aren't acid resistant with digestion with your uh, overall food and digestion, it can help. The Megaspore brand is definitely acid resistant. I typically have all my Bifido, Lactobacillus, Saccharomyces brands away from food, empty stomach. And then I'll do typically megaspore or spore-like probiotics with food. They're more acid resistant. It's me, wrote in. How are your thoughts on the body's structure? Is it made of minerals or the alphabetic order like vitamin A, B, C? Not sure your question, but in general, your bones are half protein and then half minerals, about 13 different minerals. Um, of course, like, you know, 70% of your body's water, right? You got maybe six, 700 grams of stored carbohydrate. You got a lot of fat, and then you got a whole bunch of protein. So good fats, good proteins. Um, Fat-soluble vitamins are the big ones that stick around, right? So A, D, E, and K, everything else is going to be pretty much flushed out or kind of used on demand. Paul writes in, I had Crohn's, and after doing your protocol, it's in complete remission. Colonoscopy showed no inflammation. Hey, that's great. You got to email my office a review, Paul, so I can get, the, get your feedback on that and share with more patients because – Patients need this hope, need that support. I've had a lot of patients go into remission, but that's an awesome story. Please email the office at office at Justin Health that story. I appreciate it. Great job. Keep it up. Elizabeth writes in, so since I'm killing phase, I should go low FODMAP? No, you can increase the FODMAPs gradually, Liz, just to kind of bait out some of the critters, right? Because it's going to help you know, cause some of these bacteria to move back up. I don't have your patient file right in front of me. But if we have some bacterial issues, this will kind of help bait some of them up. But just make sure it's not causing you to be excessively bloated or gassy. So feel it out. Looked at the food list and everything I love and eat seems to be high FODMAP. Start with some of the moderate stuff and then go to some of the higher stuff after. Just don't do it so much where you get overly bloated list. Hope it helps. Adam wrote in, I have low inflammation and zonulin, but I have gut issues. Is my gut considered not leaky? Yeah, so... That's why I don't do it because sometimes you don't see a perfect correlation with zonulin inflammation and gut infections or gut issues. It's, you know, it's not quite perfect. So I would look at all of the six R's and make sure I cross all those six R's off and I'd look and make sure there's no other infections at all because I'm concerned about other bacteria or yeast or parasites. Uh, Grand X writes in, suffering with candida as I currently on vacation. Is there any alcohol I'm allowed to have regardless what should I do to contradict it? Well, I mean, you could keep the alcohol to like a Tito's vodka or just a harder alcohol and then just do a sparkling water with it and then just a half a lime or a lemon. That's a better way to do it. I have an article on how to eat, how to consume alcohol in a healthy way on my site. Go search it, justinhealth.com. Put it in the search. I need to write in, just purchase fenugreek powder. I'm improving my diet and I'm wanting to go off metformin. Fenugreek will help me with sugar levels. Thank you. Yes. They definitely will. You're welcome, Anita. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Good luck. Lakshmi wrote in, my husband is diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, AS. That's an autoimmune condition for all the listeners. Should he avoid citric content foods? He has pain in his spine while driving a vehicle on bumpy roads. What's the best for him? Well, I would start off with at least an autoimmune template. Klebsiella has a big association with ankylosing spondylitis, so get the gut looked at too. He can get on some higher quality liposomal curcumin to help with inflammation as well. Chelsea writes in, what would cause spotting and passing a blood clot for 10 to 12 days before period starts? Uh, could be a fibroid. Could be a fibroid. It could be that you have lower progesterone levels and your endometrial lining doesn't get fully evacuated from the previous cycle, and you may see... Um, last month's lining come out, you're going to know, especially if you see it browner and more cloudier, and then eventually it starts getting brighter and more red. That's a sign that the last month cycle. So get your estrogen dominance fixed with a good functional medicine doc, but that's what that typically means. Sarah, you're welcome. Elizabeth writes in, do you recommend potassium supplements? Um, do you have this in a pill form? 
What are the side effects of potassium deficiency? I mean, you can have heart palpitations. Those kind of things are, are common. So the first thing is get enough potassium, 4,700 milligrams a day. What does that look like? That's six servings of vegetables, a sweet potato or a squash and an avocado, okay? If you need extra, you can get what's called new salt, NU hyphen salt. I like that product. You can also email my office. I use a product called potassium HP that I like a lot. That works good too. Hope that helps, Liz. Addis writes in, thank you, you're welcome. Miss Lee writes like, thank you for answering all these questions. You're totally welcome. Addis writes in, what is your best iron supplement? I heard of elemental iron. It depends. I think if you're you know, keeping it simple, you can just do nice quality liver. Liver either in a capsule or frozen, or in my line, we have one called Iron Supreme that's an amino acid chelated iron to a glycine molecule. That's good too. Um, both of those are awesome. K Gupta writes in, can you recommend a good brand of DIM and I2C? So I think you mean Indol 2 Carbonyl and DIM. Um, Designs for Health has one called DIM Avail and Indol 2 Carbonyl Thorn has one. Larry Weibel writes in, Dr. J, Audrey here. Hey, Audrey, hope you're doing good. Really enjoyed the thyroid summit. Thanks. What's your opinion of veg juicing? Also B12 injection versus B12 sublingual. Great question. So in general, thanks for the summit uh, feedback. I appreciate it. In general, I would um, keep the juice to like lower sugar stuff, right? Cilantro, spinach, kale, maybe a little bit of ginger, like maybe a little bit of celery. Keep it to low sugar stuff, no added fruit. And I typically would only go to B12 injections if there's massive gut issues. Um, even some of my Crohn's patients, we can still get away with B12 sublingual. So I would have to have a lot of malabsorption issues. Elizabeth writes in, I purchased fermented holy basil. Is that something that can be taken every day? Should it be avoided with gut issues or am I okay to take it? You are fine to take it, Liz. Paul writes in, oof, missed that. Uh, when were you single? Uh, let's see, I've been married for five years and I've been with my wife for 10. So I've been off the market for a while. appreciate it. Okay, Gupta, is magnesium oil better than ingesting a magnesium supplement? Uh, it depends. Um, I mean, I just like doing a magnesium citrate or a malate before bed. That's kind of when I do it. Um, but in general, it just depends. Some people like rubbing stuff on their skin. If there's gut issues, that could be good too. Sandra wrote in, love the summit. Thanks, Sandra. Appreciate it. Addy wrote in, what are the black dots in the stool? Could they be blood? It could be. It could be some kind of a seed too. It's really hard to say. It's it's like easy to look in your stool and hallucinate. It's like looking at the sky and like seeing the different characters in the clouds, right? So I would think back to any food particles. A lot of times nuts can look like that. Um, seeds can do it. So you'd have to see if you can notice the consistency on what days they happen within what you're eating. Adam Erden, how do you personally get your calcium with your everyday diet? Typically just green vegetables, typically green veggies. Tonight I had... This is my meal tonight. Here you go, getting the inside scoop. Okay, here's tonight. I had kale sauteed up in coconut oil and pine nuts, and that's a Delmonico steak that I cooked up, grass-fed, step four from Whole Foods. So press what I preach. So there's probably a good good chunk of calcium there. And then I take my multi-support pack, which has a calcium dimalate in there too. Hey, Marianne, hope you're doing good. Uh, diet's good, but still feeling bloated, acidic over a week. Uh, still taking digest synergy and mitosynergy and megaspore, not going to the bathroom as often as I should. So first thing is, have you worked the HCL of the tolerance? Uh, have you kind of got the, um, if you're doing the digest, we may need to add in a enzyme in there besides the digest. So what was going on when everything started? So first off, I'd up the magnesium, make sure you're regular. All right, up the magnesium. I'd be sipping on some ginger tea during the day just to help calm the gut. And when is it happening? Number one. Number two is cut out all raw foods. Kind of at least make sure everything's steamed and cooked. Make sure you're chewing your food up well. I know when you're at work, you get busy. You may be not chewing it up enough. So make sure you chew your food up really, really well. Um, take the digest energy. Work on going up to maybe even four or five capsules with food on that. If we have to add in some enzymes, we can sip some of that ginger tea and make sure your bowels are moving so you're not reabsorbing any fecal toxins. And then keep me posted, okay? Paul writes in, what do you do to activate your parasympathetic nervous system? Uh, first thing is breathing through the nose. Second best thing is going to be gratitude. Those are going to be the best two. Olfactory nerve, cranial number two, and then gratitude. That's it. Best two, I think. There's more. Singing, gargling, those kind of things, but that, that's easier though. 
Sarah wrote, let me see here. Sarah, what did you say? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Lost my place, guys. When I use the middle part of my cursor like this, it just brings me down right to the bottom. <laughs> Super annoying, but it's okay. What's the correlation between high blood pressure and blood glucose? So um, correlation is this. S glucose, sodium follows glucose, and obviously insulin follows glucose as well, right? So you have, and, and insulin can cause vasoconstriction. So you have high glucose, which causes increased sodium, increased sodium causes increased water retention, and then increased insulin is going to cause vasoconstriction. So you have more water, and then you have a smaller vessel to cause that water to go through, so then you have blood sugar go up. And then if you want to get more technical, um, if you're consuming more fructose, fructose decreases the endothelial synthase enzyme, which causes more vasoconstriction. Chelsea, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Well, Sean, right in. What's the difference between functional medicine and naturopathic medicine? So a lot of naturopaths operate like allopathic doctors, but they use vitamins and minerals and herbs to treat things palliatively and not root cause. That being said, there's a lot of naturopaths that practice functional medicine too. Typically in school, naturopaths aren't necessarily taught functional medicines, but a lot of them have taken outside courses, studied on their own, and they already have a great education. They just kind of build in that functional medicine model into the naturopathic medicine. Um, so essentially, just it's the model. It's just naturopathic medicine, for the most part, has become more allopathic with more natural compounds. But of course, there are exceptions. Let's see here. Starla writes in, if you eat too much liver, would it be bad for you? Well, I mean, you can't get a lot of B12 and vitamin A. You don't need a lot, though. That's the thing. An ounce or two, you know, once or twice a week. I have my females do it every day during their menses. What are your thoughts on IV supplement therapies, worth or no? Uh, it depends, Addy. I would say if you have a lot of gut issues, a lot of malabsorption, it could be initially. Um, but I typically, it's not sustainable. It's too expensive, and you, it takes too long every day to do it, right? Because a lot of these nutrients are gone in a couple days. So, Orally is going to be the most sustainable, but acutely, could it be great? Yes. And especially if you have some gut issues, yes. If there's any cancer involved, yes. So there's definitely circumstances where it's better for sure. Chelsea, how do I raise progesterone and balance estrogen dominance? We'll first get tested, make sure that's the case, but we could actually do bioidentical progesterone. We can do things to help metabolize estrogen. We can give herbs to help support progesterone, but make sure you see a good functional medicine doc, Chelsea, because you got to get tested and you got to know what you're doing. You got to make sure there's not any other things going on that could be contraindicated to what's happening. Jack JMC writes in, can too much fat and fiber in a meal bloat you? Potentially, yeah. If you're eating so much protein and fat, yeah, that could be an issue. That's why like on Thanksgiving, like on my kitchen table, if I took a picture, there's like a big bottle of HCL and enzymes. There's also a big bottle of charcoal in case you break out a little alcohol, there's charcoal there too. And then I have some detoxification amino acids too. So we, I come prepared, but yeah, definitely. And you may need more HCL and enzymes. Good rule of thumb is eat till you're about 80% full. Paul wrote in, I do still live in Austin. Yes, I do. But I'm back and forth. I'm traveling a little bit now. I'm not there yet though. Not right now. I'm out, out of town. Robert wrote in, what are the best antiviral herbs or supplements? Uh, best antiviral are going to be lysine's a great amino acid for antiviral. Um, reishi medicinal mushrooms are great for antiviral. Monolaurin is great for antiviral. And then you can also do things like silver is excellent. I mentioned reishi. You could also do um, other mushrooms too, like cordyceps or chaga are great. Those are all good. Adam, thank you for your help. I'll try to use turpentine with silver in the diet and let you know in a few weeks. Thank you. Let me know. Michael wrote, secretory IgA is twice what it should be. What could cause this? An infection or food or poor digestion or all of it. Homeopathy is a sham. I would say no. It, it definitely is not. I, I do personally feel homeopathy uh, tends to be more allopathic but using more natural compounds. I've used some homeopathic compounds for myself, for my family, and they have worked well. I don't typically incorporate it in functional medicine that much, but I have seen they do work and they can be very effective. Like for instance, there's a, a product called Camellia that I used on my son for teething and that thing worked like a freaking charm. And a lot of parents are given like all this like, um, I forget, is it liquid ibuprofen or liquid Advil? Whatever the one you can give to kids under two years old. 
and maybe liquid Advil um, or Tylenol maybe. And so liquid one and you put it on the gums too. Uh, that one, we didn't have to even do that because the camellia works so well. Janet writes in, what can help vaginal dryness and atrophy? Yeah, I mean, there's probably very low hormones. I mean, if you're menopausal, we got to get to the root cause. But yeah, getting the hormones fixed is going to be huge. Very important. Uh, how do you calm a girl down with PMS with functional medicine? Well, typically there's estrogen dominance. We fix the estrogen dominance by supporting progesterone. Typically there's adrenal issues and blood sugar issues as well. Matt writes in homeopathic allergy histamine blockers for seasonal allergies really help a lot. Yeah, they do. Histamine blockers are good. Also, just kidney extract, hot, just kidney glandular. There's a lot of DAO in there, and that DAO can help metabolize histamine too. But yes, I agree. Addis writes in, what are your thoughts on CBD oil? I like it. I think it's good. Just make sure if you're getting it, getting it from a reputable company because there's a lot that aren't don't have good quality. There's a lot of solvents and not so good stuff in it. I carry one at my office. It's not online though, because people are cracking down on it. So if you're a patient though, you could email me and we can get you set up with that. All right, excellent guys. I think we hit all the major questions. All right, excellent. Well, I'm gonna be back probably uh, either tomorrow, definitely Friday morning, I'll be back. I'm just kind of moving my office around here, different location. So I'm excited to be connected with you guys again and I look forward to connecting here. Uh, Matt wrote in, I found a CBD oil, great mood, anxiety, and nausea. Yes, I think it is excellent mood, anxiety, and nausea for sure. And also sometimes pain and inflammation and even epilepsy too. You're welcome, Agnes. Hey, you guys have a phenomenal night. Give me a, a thumbs up. Give me a share as well. Put your comments below. Want to know what you think? Let me know about show topics that we can do to get more info out to y'all here. I appreciate you guys being great spectators and your great questions. Have an awesome night. Take care. Bye.